Saturday, the 17th of August. Thought I'd give you a, my spin on what it's like to uh, be on fixed income with the inflation that we've <laughs> experienced in the, the last few years. <clears throat> the uh, inflation factor that that happens uh, part of it has to do with the amount of debt we carry in our country. Uh, we only have a certain amount of money that goes out that we spend somewhere else and a certain amount that is brought in by how much we manufacture. At the present time uh, our debt our, we're spending 1.6 trillion dollars more than what we take in as a country. So that is a huge amount. And we're not paying off our debt whatsoever. I'm talking about this is we're spending that much more than we take in to run our federal government. Now <clears throat> as you know, there are a lot of programs out there that uh, some of them are help programs and you know that a lot of the blame sometimes falls on they say well give an example. Some of your politicians are going to say, well, Social Security is a big problem, Medicare is a big problem, Medicaid is a big problem, SSI is a big problem. Uh, and that is, you know, our, that is a huge, huge amount of the money that's spent by our country. I want to tell you something. The Social Security, in general, stands on its own. And before the baby boomers were old enough to start collecting Social Security, they had paid more money in, realizing what was going to happen when we got there. I'm, and I'm a little older than the normal baby boomers, okay. <clears throat> Those, the, the people in Congress, they have total control of Social Security. They can stop it tomorrow. They can say that that's in the program, and there's not much you and I as a citizen could do because, like I say, it's 100% under the control of Congress. So whichever party is in there makes a determination of how it's run. Social Security itself, uh, at different times, I thought it's too bad it it didn't run with our economy, and in a sense it does. It the increases or cola increases they call them are due to uh, the health of our nation and that's, uh, that's raised as the inflation comes up. Unfortunately, it doesn't raise anywhere near what the inflation is, maybe half. So you're always on a downward spiral as your uh, inflation goes up. Now for me, I have a certain amount of investments out there. And even now, like my pension that I uh, get from years of working, uh, and this goes back quite a while, is froze at a certain amount. It froze at, uh, I think, just just about the time I retired. <laughs> Whatever you were figured I'd get when you retired, that's all you get till till you the day they plant you six feet under. Uh, regardless of what inflation is. So it's always it, it's always shrinking in buying power. Uh, give you an example. In, since three and a half, four years, uh, my investments for buying power have probably shrunk somewhere near between 35 and 40 percent. So that means I've got less money in real terms because if you can't buy something with it, I look at what I can buy okay so I can't buy what I could four years ago <clears throat> and there's several things we did as a nation in that amount of time now as taxes go up so does inflation 
I don't know if you realize it or not, but taxes on business become hidden taxes because they're called cost of doing business. Once that tax goes to the, the, the company, because they don't operate for free, they operate on profit. Now, not only do they mark it up, <laughs> the amount the tax is, they mark it up for the amount of profit they want to have at the end of the year. So you say, well, why would business not care what the tax is on them? Well, on the national market, the higher tax our businesses pay, the less competitive they are on the world market. Now, you wouldn't think that would affect us too much, would you? Because you think, well, we're self-supporting. Well, we're not. I just got through telling you. We spend more, 1.6 more to run our country than what we take in. Here's another thing I want you to think about. We are supporting more than one country out there. So we pay all that money that we pay, we're paying interest on that money because we don't have it. We borrow it. Now, I know some of you say that that's baloney. We don't do that. Yes, we do. You can consider every penny actually borrowed because it's not money spent on us. It's money spent somewhere else and we borrow every single penny. You say, well, it's in the budget. Yeah, it is. It is. And what happens is, if you noticed in the last year, every three months they're trying to balance the budget because they run out of money. And they've had these trillion dollar budgets that they're spending expenditures that they're passing so that we can supplement our general fund so we can pay these bills. You, as a consumer, if you spent that kind of money, and I'm only talking percentage, not dollars, percentage of your income in the way the government does, you would be flat broke within a few years and could not operate at all. You would be in debt. And you could take bankruptcy and clear those debts, but you can only do that ever, I don't know if it's six or seven years. And it catches up with you very quick. And you want you to ask, well, how can we get out of that dilemma? Well, all we gotta do is get the people that are working for us in the government not to spend so much money. On the other hand, when they start doling it out for programs, because they we're going to pay off the student debt. Well, that's money out of your pocket. It's borrowed money. We have to borrow it to pay the loan off. So you and I are essentially doing that for a select group of only so many years. So that, that group got a free ride. But the next group won't, and the group that was before them won't. Just that group. Do you think there's any specific reason for it? Would you say that maybe they do that to get reelected? <laughs> I think so. Your votes are, be, are being bought. And I'm not saying you have to vote for either party. What I'm saying is watch who you vote for. See what they're, who is spending the money. Now, when those big bills were uh, throwing out their... Uh, and they started spending it, both parties were, were at fault. Yeah, oh yeah. They both point their fingers at each other, but both parties. Now, it, I, I realize the Repub there was less Republicans voted for it than Democrats. Almost 100% of the Democrats voted for these big bills to spend money we don't have. Now, if we can stop spending so much more than what comes in, because they all tell you, this, we're spending money right now and it'll be all paid for in a few years. It'll be taken care of. And each time they've done that, that's been a lie, an absolute lie. Otherwise, we wouldn't be going in debt, further in debt each day. The only way you get it turned around is you have to somehow stop these people from spending in there. Now, how can our nation compete with the world? Well, number one, <laughs> we can start drilling 
and getting some of the fossil fuel out and you say well that'll that'll kill the world no I, it, actually it won't the world is out there their their methods of pulling oil out of the ground is much dirtier than ours their refineries aren't as clean we are one of the leading manufacturers or were of maintaining a balance in the uh, fossil fuels we had a lot of advanced programs we scrub our uh, exhaust out of our uh, factories special systems for filtering the fumes we were a leader in just about everything now we're not you know about almost four years ago we started buying 12 to 14 percent of our usage off the open market a lot dirtier oil than what we actually manufacture here we stopped the pipeline from coming across our country which is a cheap transportation for oil that we were getting a special deal for out of Canada the day we did that, which was the day of the change of election when uh, people were elected three and a half years ago, took over. 10,000 people lost their jobs in the United States. That's not counting how many lost their jobs in Canada. <clears throat> so when you think about these things that we're doing, we're, we're supposed to be the good guys where we're out there cleaning up the whole world are we on a downhill slide financially where we're not going to be able to live in the very near future because we're already experiencing a high rate of inflation what's it do to the jobs well if you tax your manufacturers out of business they go overseas in this last year we've had a huge amount of people that are taking their factories somewhere else right now there's a big grocery chain out there that is proposing to take their entire IT department to India why do you think they're doing that this is a homegrown company that services the people the people of this country work for them, and yet they're taking a big entity of their company and this is a big company this isn't a small company it's a grocery company they just announced in the past week that they are moving their IT program to India do you think it's a matter of cost what does that cost entail well part of it is wages benefits and, and taxes <laughs> it's funny a company that was formed here it, and has always hired citizens of this country and they sell to people of this country they don't operate outside of the United States now are taking part of the workforce from another country that they can and that's the IT department it's a huge I can tell you it's a huge department it is big dollars if they're doing that that means a lot of the IT people in this country could be out of a job in the future because this is the tip of the iceberg for more IT to be done somewhere else but not only is the labor the technology will follow that almost immediately or it will grow in that country we have to figure out a way where we can compete on the open market better and you can't do it with just a tariff system because that penalizes the other country and us at the same time now for me this last four years has taught me a pretty big lesson I let things slide for two years before I reinvested my money my money is invested here in, in this country and it's not a lot it's, it was enough to sustain my way of life but not a lot of money uh, you know uh, uh, in comparison to everybody else in the United States I, I I was lucky I hadn't put enough away where I could maintain myself and my wife 
but I couldn't raise a family on it today. I, I couldn't. If I had uh, two kids in my house, it would be very hard. Uh, the, the most expensive things I've got out there that I pay for are taxes. And you say, well, how can, how can somebody your age pay taxes? Well, the taxes on my house have tripled since I was retired. <laughs> now, I've, and I've been retired 15 years this year. To maintain a car has quadrupled. My house expenses have went up. I, I keep charts on everything. So, of course, my medication has been kind of like this. Some of it's real expensive. An EpiPen with coupons and special deals. I was able to buy the last one. I think it was for uh, two hundred and seventy-five dollars. It's there's it's a dual pen set, but I'm hoping this new setup coming out will be down where they're saying it might be, because they got a new one coming out. You just sprain your nose like Narcon or something. The last time I needed something like that, I ended up in the hospital. <clears throat> a few years before that, it was forty-five bucks for those EpiPens. That increase, now that's what my, my insurance pays part of it. The increase was almost puts it further out than what a person can really afford. Th this new one is coming out. I'm hoping it'll be down in the 45 to $47. I have a tier three there that I pay $47 for. Tier four, I pay, uh, I forget what the percentage, I think it's 25% or something like that. It's, well, no, no, it's, it's higher than that. No, I think about it, it might be 80%. But, <clears throat> and uh, new medications are under tier four. Now, I don't want to confuse you today. I won't, I won't keep this as short as I can. With medications way up here, Inflation is way up there. Groceries, on an average, are between 25 to 40 uh, percent. Meat is actually uh, between 50 to 100 percent, depending on what you buy. Simple thing like donuts, up over 50 percent in four years, three and a half. If we don't stop the inflation and stop overspending as a nation, you and I are going to get hit again like this over and over and over. Somehow they need to get a message about that. I'm going to let this one go like it is because I want to come back and talk a little more about it. I just don't want to end your date with you with way too much to think about. Fixed income people are hurting. Poor people are hurting. If you can't buy a house, and, and let me tell you something. Renting is not the answer. <laughs> if you think you don't pay those increase in taxes and insurances and all that when you rent, you pay for it for a rent increase, but you don't get credit for it. No, it's not too tax deductible for you. The homeowner can deduct it off his taxes. But what do you think he's saving on that? <laughs> Whatever rate of taxes he's paying at the time, that's all he's saving is that percentage of the tax itself when they deduct it. That's all. And I'll try to explain that later too. And I want to tell you what drives inflation on my next, it may not be the very next one, but down the line I will. But we have to start making people account. The people that work for us need to let us know what they're spending money on and why they're spending it. Socialist programs will break the incentive for people to go out there and work whether with their minds or their hands. I know everybody would like to live in a utopia. We're not ever going to have anything that here on earth until the Lord takes over and says, here you go. But even then, 
well, we just have to see if <laughs> if uh, we all make it. Okay. I, I hope I'm not scaring you on this thing. <clears throat> I just want you to think about it. Fixed income is having it tougher right now. Lower income bracket is having an awful time, especially families. <clears throat> middle income almost, I mean, the middle income people are almost gone. They either got richer or they got poor. The middle income, really, it's just not too much there anymore. I've always considered myself in the middle income bracket, and I'm not unhappy with being there. Uh, Middle income means that you have a roof over your head, uh, you have plenty of food. Uh, in general, you're happy. You may have a vehicle in your drive, you may not. Uh, if you save, you can have your toys. Biggest thing is you can eat what you want, pretty much. <laughs> in other words, middle income have it pretty decent. Uh, the poor people, some don't know how bad they have it because they've never experienced the next step up. The ones that have stepped backwards, they know it very well. The people on the street know what it's like. By the way, if you want to see what happens to some of the people here in this country because of lack of facilities to help those that are down and out, I want you to go up to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, just type that in there and put on there uh, street people or something of like that. I forget what street it is up there, but Philadelphia uh, homeless or uh, Philadelphia drugs. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. There's a street up there, you will not believe it because the huge percent of the people that live on that street look like zombies. They're using a, a thing called crank. And that particular drug is causing them to lose fingers, arms, legs, feet, hands. This stuff eats the skin, it just boils. You can't believe what it is. But give you an idea of what our country is slipping into, when there's no hope except for alcohol and drugs, and very little intervention, places that we can take these people up off, off the street. Uh, this is that's what happens, and this isn't the only place in the United States that's like it, but it's one of the most famous. And when you see it, it's going to upset your stomach. A lot of young people out there, you don't get very old with the problems they have on that street. You won't get my age, I can tell you that. That's a pure fact. All right, well, I'll give you something to think about. Next time back, I'm going to talk a little more about our economy and maybe how we can dig out of that hole and what is it going to take for help, self-help, our, our own nation, self-help. What's it going to take? What can we do? How can we stop this $1.6 trillion? And you're going to say, Ray, you don't know what you're talking about. Well, the treasurer of the United States, that woman, last week was on the news and admitted that we are that going that far in debt because we do not have enough money coming into the government. We had to borrow $1.6 trillion per the budget for the past year. $1.6 trillion. That is as big inflationary thing that you can have. So don't let any politician tell you <laughs> inflation is not as bad as it was. Every time you go to the grocery store, you know it's bad. And I'm talking about both parties are guilty of this. Not one, both. We, the people, are 100% at blame for putting these people in there. They're spending money, yours and mine, and they don't speak, they're not able to control their habit. And one of the things they're doing more than anything else is they're trying to buy our votes with special programs. When you give the money and it goes up to the federal level, 
you have multiple people that get salaries on that money going up. And then when you reach your hand out to get some of it back, there's multiple people on the way down to hand it back out to you. Why can't you keep it at home in your county, your state? You could always middlemen out, right? Why does it have to go up before it can come back down? Why do we have to have more than half the people in the United States in one way or another depend on the federal payroll? The other half are paying that. Okay. When, when you come back on my next thing, video, maybe not the next one, but somewhere in the next week or 10 days, I'll try to explain more of that out. So, in any case, have a good day today. That's all for today. I hope you can hear me fine. Uh, <laughs> thanks for listening. And uh, maybe between you and I, maybe we can solve some of these problems. At least we'll know some of how to do it.